welcome back to my channel. My name is Shan McLove. If this is your first time here, please, um, you know, come in, get comfortable. Um, I want to welcome you here. If you're coming back, welcome back, you guys. Um, if you, again, if you're new here, I want you to go back because this is part two of my accountability series. Um, if you can go back and check out the first part, which is talking about are you the problem in your relationship? Because in accountability, we want to talk about how we can um, build, you know, great, healthy relationships, y'all. Um, we've all been there before. Now, I do want to kind of go ahead and just give you guys, you know, this heads up. Hey, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I'm just, you know, a woman here who is trying to um, share some information that I've gathered over, you know, the past years with life experiences, um, things that I've read, things that I've seen. So right now, today, you guys, what I'm coming to you guys to talk about is toxicity and, well, basically toxic traits in relationships so when we talk about this you know we all hear people talk about oh this person is toxic oh this relationship is toxic but do we really know how to recognize those things do we know the difference between what's passion and compassion and what's actually toxic because some people believe that um all fighting is oh we're just passionate lovers you know and sometimes it's toxic and sometimes people be believe that all toxic you know that all arguments are toxic that's not necessarily the case um but what i do want to do is just kind of briefly go over um may not be that brief but kind of go over 12 um 12 traits that you may recognize in your relationship now keep in mind that even though you may hear some of the things that's happening in your relationship is not necessarily a deal breaker and we'll talk about that uh, once we get done with the list now one of the first things that we want to talk about is um whether or not you do all the work are you the one in the relationship that has to plan all the dates that does all the remembering that actually puts forth the effort to communicate are you the one who puts forth the effort to you know just spend time with the other you feel like everything is one-sided you're the only one giving compliments you're the only one supporting you know one you're the only one saying you know hey let's do this hey let's do that and the other person just seems uninterested that can be very draining and it can be a little bit um discouraging as well you know so that is something you want to look at another thing is whether or not you don't feel like yourself if you're in a relationship with someone and you don't feel comfortable being who you are um then what that means is they don't know you they don't give it get a chance to know you they can't you can't expect a person to get, grow to love you respect you if you're not comfortable with showing them who you are if you're in a relationship and you spend your entire relationship trying to conform to the person they want you to be instead of the person you are guess what you will be changing for the rest of your life and chasing that dream or that vision because they're going to change you're going to change what they want is going to change and you'll never be able to keep up with that so my thing is be you be with someone who loves you for you period don't kill yourself trying to be someone's dream because guess what? What they want at 25, they may not want at 30. And what they want at 30, they may not want at 40. So if you're looking for something that's lifetime, just be you and let them learn to love you for who you are. Now, one thing that probably all of us has dealt with in the past with, you know, um, with relationships that just went straight to hell is trust issues. Uh, people lying, you know, you you can't believe them. And sometimes people lie about simple things. It's not even that they're cheating. They're just not honest. They lie about financial things. They lie about, you know, their jobs or, you know, where they're going with their friends. And a lot of times it can be unnecessary stuff, you know. So when you have those unnecessary lies, you're like, well, if you lie about something small, I'm sure you'll lie about something big, you know. So then you start questioning everything that they say they give you a story and because they're trying to impress you they embellish and add all this extra stuff then you're thinking oh okay well this is great then you later find out that it was all 
a complete lie, then you're like, okay, well, is anything that you're telling me the truth? If the person you're with can't be honest with you, then what do you have? Because you have to be able to trust each other when you're building, when you're growing, when you're making decisions that are going to affect both of you, right? So you want to be able to trust that person. You don't want to worry about whether or not you're being lied to. Now, this is another thing. If you feel insecure. Now, people will run to this and say, well, I'm secure. I love myself. I know my self-worth. This isn't what, this isn't that. Being insecure in your relationship is more so about whether or not your person wants you. You love yourself, true enough, but you still want to be in a relationship with someone who finds you attractive, someone who loves you for you, who wants to be with you, who's not out looking at every person, you know, that walks by as a potential, you know, new mate. Oh, you know, they're keeping their options open. No one wants that. You want to feel secure that no one can come into your relationship and come between you. Um, again, this has nothing to do with your self-worth or whether or not you feel like your spouse or significant other wants you. And if they are always, you know, saying something about the way you look or always complimenting someone who looks completely different from you, oh, you know, you may be, you know, you may be skinny and they like someone that's a little bit bigger. You may be curvy and they like someone that's slim. You may be short. They want some always complimenting people that are tall. Those little things will be like, well, damn, hell, if I'm none of the things that you find attractive, then it can kind of um, make you look at them a little sideways and be like, well, damn, you know, are you, am I just placeholding until you find someone? You know, and it's, again, this has nothing to do with how you feel about you. Cause you can be like, well, shit, I know I'm fine. I know I look good. But you want to make sure that the person you're with agrees. You know what I'm saying? So the next one that I want to talk about is whether or not you feel worse when you're around them. Every time you're with your significant other, you feel pressure to, you know, do this or you're uneasy. Um, things seem difficult. You know, you're, you're you just, just on edge the entire time. And, you, and then the crazy part about it is you will feel relieved when they're gone. Like if you're with someone and you're tensed up when you're around them all the time, um, and then when they leave, you're like, oh, now I can breathe. That's terrible. You should be able to breathe and relax into your partner and not hold your breath the whole time that you're around them. They should be your peace. And not the things that get you, not the thing that gets you stirred up. And moving into that, um, kind of going directly into the next one, is walking on eggshells. You shouldn't feel like every time you're around your significant other, like you can't talk to them, you can't be open, you can't say anything because everything is going to lead to an argument, them, you know, just blowing up or catching the attitude, you're like, dang, we just got over this. Um, let me not say anything to create another issue. You should be able to be you, open your mouth, say what you want to say without fear that they're going to blow up on you. Um, and another thing, um, another thing with that is called, you know, therapists call it stonewalling. And that's when you go to your significant other and, um, you want to tell them how you feel about something and what they do is they shut you out, right? It's like some of you may have experienced that. Some of you may have been the one who's done that. You don't want to hear, they don't want to hear what you got to say. They're like, look, I don't feel like hearing this mess. So they cut you off. They either hang up the phone if you're on the phone, don't listen to you, walk out the door, go to, well, I'm going to bed. Well, you know, I'm about to go home. And you know, they just shut you out. They don't want to hear what it is that you have to express to them, which is bad because if there is something concerning you or an issue for you, your significant other should care enough about you and your relationship to want to hear it out. And even if they're not in a good mood, they should care enough for you to just be like, look, you know, baby, um, 
I'm not really in a good mood right now to talk about it. I would love, you know, to hear what you got to say. Can you give me a minute? You know, can you give me, you know, a little bit and we can revisit this? Not that I don't want to hear you, you know, X, Y, and Z, but just give me a minute. They should at least say something like that. Now, they may not say it exactly like that because everyone's not the same, but they should at least acknowledge that they see that there is something bothering you and that they do want to talk about it, even if they can't do it at that moment. So, um, moving forward, another thing would be isolated. If you're in a relationship and you've noticed that the person you with don't want you hanging around friends, they don't want you going around your family, they just want you to be with them a thousand percent of the time, they don't want to share you. That's not healthy. That's semi on the side of control. You know, you don't want someone that's trying to control you and separate you from your family and friends. You need that space. It is very healthy for you to be able to get away from your significant other and have your peace of mind. You want to be able to have that. That gives you a chance to breathe and relax and just, you know, have your you time. Everyone needs self-care, right? Everyone needs a chance just to let loose with friends. And again, it's not that you can't do that with your significant other, but you just need space sometimes. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with it. Next one I want to talk about is toxic communication. Toxic communication, like, hmm, what is that? Now, toxic communication is when you and your significant other are in the house all the time and you guys aren't sharing words that are positive or loving or even just regular conversation. Everything is petty. Everything is critical. Um, you know, you're always criticizing each other. It's all sarcasm, but not out of jokes, not like fun. You know, you're joking around, but really just you guys just being assholes to each other. You know, you may be bringing up, oh, well, I guess I'm not as cute as that girl you was, you know, who pictured you like the other day. Oh, they may be, or he may, or she may be like, well, what about that dude you was looking at or that girl you were looking at? You know, it's little comments like that or sometimes they may um, crack jokes about, you know, your clothes. Well, you gonna wear that? Oh, okay, walking around looking like, it's, you know, this and that. You know, I don't wanna, you know, I can't come up with any specific examples, I'm gonna be honest, right off the top of my head or some petty stuff people will say. But seriously, if you're going through it, or if you've been through it, you know what I'm talking about. Where it's just no love, it's just all sarcasm, and it's like, whatever. Everything they say, it annoys you. So you just like, mm -hmm, okay, whatever. You don't want that kind of communication. If your significant other tells you, hey, you look nice, you yeah, you tell that to everybody. Whatever. Instead of saying thank you, babe, you know, that's, you know, that's toxic, you know, where you can't accept a compliment or you give them a compliment and they don't say thank you. They just mm -hmm, walk out the door. Like little stuff like that creates tension in a relationship, right? It creates tension because one person is trying, the other one is being an asshole. And then sometimes it's just both of you. And you need to figure out what's going on there. Now, something that a lot of people do in toxic relationships, which also comes back to accountability, is the blame game. Um, if you or your person struggle with apologizing, you blame, they blame everything that's happened, all of their actions on you or you blame all of your actions on them. Nothing is ever your fault. Well, I only did X, Y, and Z because of you. Well, had you not been getting on my nerves, I wouldn't have done this. I don't care how much a person is getting on your nerves, you are still held accountable for what you do. Period. It's how you react. Like, you know, if you go down in the dirt, I don't have to get down in the dirt with you. I can let you stay there and I'll rise above all of that. You know, you want to play dirty, fine. You deal with that. But I'm not going to meet you there. You know, you not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play that game with you. you you're still held responsible for how you act. I'm responsible for me. You're responsible for you. And so, a lot of times, 
you will find that a toxic person in a relationship, they just will not apologize. Even if you have receipts, even if you can prove to them, it's like, well, whatever. I said what I said. No. No, no, no. Don't you accept the blame? Because once you start this you know, that habit of accepting it and letting them get away. Well, all right, they will. I'm sorry, baby. No, no, no. You're still responsible. Now, I'm not going to lie. There are some, there are times where in a relationship where you can be petty. You know, you can, sometimes we react off things that are just, it's like, really, you didn't have to do that. You know, was that really something worth you being upset about? We, we, everyone has a moment where we're petty. And we have to slow down and stop and think whether or not that issue, that thing that we're mad about, if it's really a big enough issue to you, if it's really that big of a deal where you have to create a problem with your significant other. Is it really? Is it just something you could overlook? You know, whatever. Is it something you could have overlooked, but you decided to make an issue about it anyway? No. Sometimes you have to pick and choose your battles. Now, if it's something that makes you uncomfortable, that hurts your feelings, yes, then you want to address it. But if it's just something real small, you know, just, sometimes we can let those things go. Because those little small things that we could have ignored can sometimes grow and grow and grow and turn into something big that it never had to be in the first place. Um, so let's see, what else? that I want to tell us okay well I think the last thing that I want to address when it comes down to um, some of toxic some of the toxic traits would be ignoring yourself um, and when I say ignoring yourself I mean you either and it goes both ways either you completely ignore yourself and focus 100% on what your partner needs so you're, you know, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not thinking about what you want in the relationship. Everything is about what they want, what they need, um, what satisfies them. And you and you make it okay for you to be hurt or for you to be sad. You're like, well, as long as she's happy, as long as he's happy. No, that's not healthy. You both should be, should be, you know, happy. And it could work the other way where you're only thinking about you and what you want. Well, I well, all I'm worried about is my happiness. No, once you're in a relationship, you know, you have to meet in the middle. You should be, yes, you want to be happy, right? That's true. You should always want to be happy in your relationship. But you don't, you know, forget about them. You want your, your person to be happy too. Because if they're not happy, then you're not in a healthy relationship. You're not in a growing relationship. It's slow sinking. And that's a complete waste of your time and theirs if you don't want to make that work. So make sure you're taking care of you and you know, seeing that your partner is doing the same and that you're seeing sing about each other, right? So the best thing you wanna do is make sure that you're in a relationship that's supportive. Cause another thing about, you know, toxic relationships is a lack of support. You wanna be able to lift one another up, whether you're having a bad day, you know, you're going through a tough time, cause there will be bad days. There will be days where your person is upset about something that happened at work. There could be personal issues. There could be family issues. Um, you you know, you could be going through something. And you need someone who's going to be there with you when, when everything goes south. You don't want someone that's going to run at the first sign of trouble. You know, who? how are you going to build a relationship like that? That's every time something happens, I look around and you're gone. I need someone who's gonna tough it out, fight it out with me, period. Who's gonna support me and love me through it. And if, if they're like, well, no, I ain't, I ain't here for that, then they're not there for you. They don't care enough. They're not invested. So don't waste your time on someone who doesn't care about your well-being, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. Your person should love you, the fool you, the whole you. They should want you to be whole in a relationship, right? You want to be whole. You don't want to be, you know, a, you know, a partial person, half broken. You want to be whole. You want someone that's whole. And there will be times where your person is broken, where you are broken, where you're sad or mad, 
people have to come to them because you know, hey, I need your opinion on something. Or there may be times where you're celebrating a goal and you want, you just want to celebrate it with them. Or, you know, you just like, look, I'm trying to do this. And you want them to be like, hey, babe, I believe in you. You got this. You can do that. There's nothing better than feeling, you know, a better feeling than your significant other just rooting for you. Like that make, that that builds your confidence. Hey, it's like, shoot, they got my baby, you know, see this and see that. You, you want that. That's a great feeling. You know what I'm saying? So you may be, you may be able to encourage yourself true enough. Yes. Definitely encourage yourself, but I don't care what you say. It's still a great feeling. It's still a great feeling to have your person just room for you to know that they have your back. Now, with all of these types of traits, there are some other things that I have not tapped into. Some things that you may have experienced, um, you know, that you may have gone through, seen, heard, read about. Um, that I didn't touch on because there are so many different things However, what I want to say with you know with all of this being said Being in a toxic relationship or having toxic traits doesn't mean that it has to be the end of your relationship With accountability comes acknowledgement, right? Once you acknowledge that you your relationship care these traits if you care about the person if you love them And you want your relationship to work once you recognize it then you guys do the work to make it better, to change and understand that change, that, again, doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and it takes effort. Again, it takes time and it takes effort. Be patient once you notice that there is an issue. Work on it. If you guys can't come to an agreement, then okay, it may be something where you may have to either um, go seek counseling because they do have couples counseling that's not just for married couples if you and your person are serious about being together and you want it to work go see a therapist there's nothing wrong with that save your save your relationship but if you guys can't get it together if it's too much you know if you're finding that you're depressed and all of that hey sometimes you have to let that thing go sometimes everything can't be saved even even if you know everything sounds good like we sometimes we get caught up in well i got my job is great you know his or her job is great you know we look good together everything works together but you're just not compatible sometimes that happens and sometimes you just have to be like you know what we gotta face sex baby this you know you a good person i'm a great person we're just not good together and sometimes you have to admit that and just decide to move on and move forward. Um, so that being said, y'all, I just want to encourage you guys to continue to, um, you know, look at your relationships, continue to, you know, work on it. Don't ignore red flags. They're there for a reason. If need be, address them. Bring them to the attention of your significant other. Handle that, deal with that. Don't let it grow. Don't let it fester. Don't sweep it under the rug because a problem is still going to be a problem whether you address it or not. And if you don't address it, it will come up again. At least if you address it and you let them know what's going on, then you can handle it. If the person don't want to work on it, they're stonewalling or, you know, they, they blame you for it, then you may have some other issues. Again, that's a toxic trait. So you either call them out on it. And they say, okay, I hear you, and we work on it. Or you say, you know, hey, I got to get out of this because this isn't good for me, and it's definitely not good for you. You're not happy, I'm not happy. And what everyone wants is a happy relationship. Now, before I go, I'm just going to say, I'll, just because you argue in your relationship and you have a fight, that does not mean that it's toxic. Just because you guys may not agree on everything, does not mean that it's toxic okay so don't you know don't run out here thinking oh we don't we had a fight this morning oh god it's something we got to break up no 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 no. that's gonna happen that's gonna happen but either way take care of you all right y'all so i'm gonna go live on tuesday which should be the 23rd at 7 p.m central standard time 
please come and join me because um, I do want to kind of talk about this a little bit more. We're going to talk about some other things with relationships, you know, maybe even ask some qu answer some questions. But I want to thank y'all for listening to me, coming in to join me today. You guys be blessed, love each other, love yourself, and you guys have a great day, all right? Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for watching my video. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.